Hello everybody, welcome to Eating Peace this week. Somebody asked a fantastic question right here in the comments on YouTube. So, I am out of control with my craving. I can't stop my craving. I can't resist it. I can't control it. Um, I'm binging. Just noticing this uh, desperate desire to have this craving stop. This endless, endless motion. So let's just watch that and take a look at urges, cravings. Whew. Aren't they amazing in a way? They are so strong. It is like we are a zombie. We have to follow and meet them. We are following them as if we are taken over by a spell. This incredible craving overwhelms us. Urge, urgency, emergency, urgent, urgent to get it handled. Watching stormy, like a tsunami, like a tornado. Has to be done. Lack of safety. I, I'm, I'm threatened almost with this urge. So what are the different reasons we are triggered? We're talking about food and eating cravings, eating cravings. Of course, there's all kinds of cravings in the world, right? Urge to get something has to have something has to be done. And we feel like this incredible anxiety. So just to watch that urgency and let's just simply be with it for a moment, seeing as you remember or recall when you've had it, this urgency that happens, <clears throat> it is a certain color, texture, temperature. Where is it in your body? How far does it reach? What does it look like? Often it's a propelling motion for me. It's always forward. It's never been behind my body unless I'm feeling shoved towards something, maybe that. But it's still, I'm getting pushed forward towards the food, towards meeting that food, consuming, taking it in, making contact with it, meeting it, running into it, ramming into it, <laughs> chomping it up. <laughs> so first, just how interesting to notice urgency and this incredible craving that can take over and seem so strong. Binge eating, any of you who've binge, been a binge eater, had a binge episode, you know what that's like. But graze eating can be sort of a low-level form of that. Like, I need a little something more. I need a little something more. And just the constant returning back to, it's not quite satisfied. It's not here. I haven't met the craving yet. I'm not satisfied. I'm not slowed down. I can't just be here. I am waiting. I am wanting. I'm desiring. And, of course, the mind will have this thought, you need to fix this. Especially if you've eaten and eaten and eaten and you've hurt yourself from eating and you are so stuffed and so uncomfortable and so unhappy. And you may purge or over-exercise or have a strategy plan in place or decide to recommit to never eating XYZ again for the rest of your life. Diet thinking, diet thinking, control thinking. So watching the strategies come in as an effort to protect you to do something about this. But let's see, what are the reasons why we eat? Hungry. We don't want the cravings to be gone when we're hungry. Otherwise, we would have to do something like keep track of time or whatever, so knowing that the body needed to eat. Oh, how funny. I've done that when it comes to diets. I haven't listened to my body at all. I've ignored it. But Good that there's a little craving cue. There's something going on inside this body that I can carry with me everywhere that I was born with, being in touch with hunger and fullness. And so knowing when hunger appears, when I begin to feel it, and there's even lots, there's plenty of time. You can move very slowly towards getting something. You can even forget about it for a while because you're busy with something else and there's no harm done. But it's great that we have some craving for food when the body is getting hungry. Good. So we don't want the craving to go away there. All right. Seeing food, seeing that amazing food, a huge buffet spread of food. Somebody offers us some food. There's food in the lunchroom. Somebody left things from a meeting and said, free, take one. Free food. A huge grocery store full of food. In our eating piece, we were doing in the small group, we were doing inquiry on this very thought. 
I need to control the craving that comes up. And somebody said when they go into a grocery store that is just amazing and filled with multiple infinite possibilities of what you can eat, oh my God, overwhelming is so big and so almost scary and I need to control that, I need to control myself from buying everything in sight. So seeing something in the environment, maybe smelling something in the environment. Also, we get triggered or have cues from big emotional experiences. They seem to like quickly move into, I know, I'll get something to eat to kind of calm down. I'll, I'll get something to eat to express this, you know, I'll, I'll, I'll get something to eat and it will re relax me. So then this thought, I have to control that because this is unbearable and I know it can feel horrible. You can have a little compassion for yourself doing the best you can that you have done everything you could to meet that craving and make it go away. And in some ways it goes away for a little while when you start eating. In a lot of ways it goes away. You're not in the middle of that incredible fight of a craving. But of course, then we're ignoring the body and we're ignoring everything else and something also isn't really satisfying the craving. So we're just continuing to eat and eat and eat and eat. This can't be it, it's not quite right. And the difficulty and stuffedness and pain of it all makes us stop. And then time passes and we just repeat the behavior over again. It's like a habit, a compulsion habit to re repeat it again. And it's not honestly and truly and deeply satisfying. Okay, so. Let's question the thought, I have to control this craving. And like this person was writing, I'm desperate to control it. What an interesting thing. You Instead of assuming, yes, oh yes, you have to do that. What if we question that? Because it's a stressful thought. I have to control the craving, and yet I don't control it. And yet I have to control it. And yet I don't control it. And yet I have to control it. What I find when we're holding that kind of perspective about cravings then we just double down our efforts or renew efforts or tighten ourselves down and beat ourselves with a whip. And the voice inside is incredibly violent. It becomes dictator-like. You have to do this. You must listen to me or else. It's threatening. Doing the best it can. It doesn't want you to go through that pain. All right, so. Is it true that you have to control your craving, that urge? So just picture yourself in the situation when there you are looking at all that delicious food that is very tasty to eat. You have to control yourself. Is it true? Notice what happens when you believe it's true. Most of us have believed it's true forever. For, for since our first time somebody said we need to lose weight or our mothers told us to stop eating like that or very early noticing in our peer groups that it's better to be skinny than to be heavy just it doesn't the, the perspective you know rises up and we begin to believe it and we don't ever question it absolutely have to control myself in order to be loved approved of appreciated wanted accepted attractive someone worthy of being made a connection with, I have to control my craving. Who would you be without that thought? Who would you be without the thought? Many of us will think without the thought, I would go insane with eating. I wouldn't care what I ate. I'd turn into a whale. Everyone would be disgusted with me. Our attitude towards our actual craving itself is like that it's just beyond it's just so disgusting. It's um, beyond recognition. It's not human. It's, it's wrong. I notice all those kinds of ideas only come in when I believe the craving is bad. Like it's just a terrible thing to have. It's wrong if you have it. You should never want anything like that in the first place. You're over wanting. You are too much. Your desires are too great. So what if we just drop that entire story? There's this craving that exists. Oh, it's terrible and I have to control it. What if I didn't believe that? What if I'm an alien from another planet and I just got here and I haven't ever heard of dieting before and that you need to 
manage, 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 and put in all this effort and make sure you do it right. And oh, all the beatings we've given ourselves. Well, if you just got here and it's a brand new day and you're an alien from another planet or an angel, angel from another planet and you, this is a human body, you can eat whatever you want. It's just going to feel best if you don't overeat and you don't undereat. Just get it, you know, just enjoy yourself. Eating is very pleasurable. It's a beautiful thing. Bring the body along, not just only the mind. Who would you be without the story? And I notice, you know, with the thought, there's all these dangers. It's like, why did we come up with this idea that I have to control this craving? Um, it's so terrible if I eat that thing. It's so awful. I'm such a bad person. I'm doing something dangerous. I'm going to give myself cancer. I'm going to make myself fat. Horrible, horrible, horrible things. I have to avoid them to make sure that I live for long and forever and the right way in the right body. That's all with the story. Without that story, this craving is wrong. I just notice like letting it be here. Let's just let the craving be here. Noticing that it's here, this wanting. Maybe it has a, <clears throat> a yoga pose, like your arms. <sighs> it's not going to last forever. Everything's temporary. I love how Byron Katie says, you know, every state of mind is temporary. Every state of mind is temporary. <clears throat> we'll tell ourselves it's not when it's just repeated itself. See, it's here all the time. I'm always anxious. Is it true? Not always anxious. I always crave everything when it comes to food. Not true necessarily. Not true. So it's just that it loves to make those always and never statements. So just letting that craving be here, letting it letting it rise up. Maybe it's here with a message. What is it trying to communicate? What is it trying to say? And if I didn't just run like just um, like a dog on a leash being pulled by that craving, I know what I need to do is immediately start eating. Quick, go get the thing. Smoke, drink, spend, shop, clean. Check the to-do to -do list off. Never stop working. Pay attention. Without that thing barking in the background, like just relaxing or letting it bark anyway, but let, let it be more distant. So it's fine that it's here. You have a little overexcited dog in the backyard <laughs> trying, to, trying to make sure you're safe. Without that story, I must control the craving. Let the craving be here. You could be very curious about the craving. I mean, that is a really interesting thing that something is so big that you kind of lose all perspective of anything else that's happening in the moment. And you also feel very ashamed and you want to do it all in secret. I do find that that's kind of an interesting thing is that if somebody knocked on the door when you're starting to stuff yourself, suddenly you stop because you don't want to be seen. Oh my gosh, my mother's here. Wipe your face off, hide all the food. You can stop. It becomes more important, you notice, for the person to approve of you and to not be berated by somebody else. We're berating ourselves so deeply, criticizing ourselves so much, but it's just helpful to notice that we are able to stop. It's just the compelling reasons to stop. But just let's watch. What if we had that craving rising up, the wanting that it seems to exist, being a human being, people want things. Wanting is part of the human condition. Oh. Just feel what that feels like to let yourself be a wanter. It's not wrong to want. In fact, it's too late. I already did it. <laughs> I can't almost help myself. It's like, can you stop wanting what you want? But you can sit with it and look at it instead of just react to it. Like, uh, holding that instead of judging it is wrong. Sometimes we'll feel like it's almost a moral issue our, this wanting that we've done with food and eating. It's like we're bad and we're bad in the eyes of God and bad in the eyes of uh, the human condition and terrible people, morally wrong, morally bad. And uh, 
just to notice what if that was not actually true, but there's just, maybe there's something off or something I'm avoiding or not seeing, not looking at, just noticing, letting the thing rise up and be here and shake me up a little. Can I make it out alive if I don't respond to the craving instantly? So let's just see what it's like and what message does it have? If it had a voice, if it was a, its own little person and a little entity that could talk, what has it got to say? Let's listen to it. Because often we'll be like, I need to control it. I need to shut it down and put it in prison and lock it away and bury the key forever. And of course, we always know there's that little, that little being is in there, that little craving way down there in the prison, way down low. And it could come out any minute. Can't seem to destroy it. So why don't we just let it come out right out in the open and have a conversation with it. Talk to it. What are you saying? Just see what it has to say about life. And it might be that it's very funny and it's not actually all true. And it's very, it's okay that it's childish. It has a childish, aggressive, frightened, terrified voice. Demanding voice. This present moment is not good enough. I need something more in it. I need to go grab something else. Maybe you haven't been letting yourself even want something, and so you're breaking out of your own prison. Often that's the case with food and eating. Telling ourselves we shouldn't be eating it, and then rebelling against our own rules and regulations that are very, very aggressive. So who would you be without the thought? So I need to not control this craving. I need to understand it. It's like when a country goes to war with another country and they start bombing the other country. You know, I need to just get, I need to shut that country down. And we all know that in the end, war is exceptionally painful, brutal, difficult, very sad that it came to that. There is another way, communicating with each other. We've all heard of that too. Nonviolent communication, mediations, peace talks incredible, miraculous things that happen when people actually listen to one another and see what their needs are and what their fears are and what would work. So let's do that with ourselves. Instead of being at war, can we just let the peace talk begin? Let the peace talk begin. I do not need to control this craving. I also don't need to immediately follow it. Um, just study it. Like, could it be... In Fascinating and interesting that it's here. Welcome the craving. Wow, what a concept. If, it, if I'm not against it and scared of it, welcome it in. And yeah, move from there. See what else happens. There's some more concepts, of course, always to question, but just to watch. Could my beliefs not be true? My thinking needs to control the craving and actually going to be real hard because my thoughts can't control the craving. The craving is kind of in response to thoughts that are already happening in the past. So, you know, letting it all be there, noticing it's okay for me to want what I want. It's okay for me to feed myself and feed myself adequately and well and not apply so much aggressiveness on what I'm eating and so much criticism. All right, let me know how it goes.